here we see a short video uh, looking at a first premolar case in the maxilla. This is a patient that lost the tooth uh, due to a longitudinal root fracture, uh, and we had waited 16 weeks of healing. So this is sort of a late implant placement. And we see here the different drilling steps uh, where we're gonna place a, a tapered implant body. Uh, it's a 4.5 millimeter implant in width. And we are also gonna measure now uh, the stability of the implant by means of RFA and the Ostel technique. Uh, so what we're gonna see here is that we attach the Ostel peg and we're gonna measure the ISQs in two different directions. So the first is 76 and the second value is 85. So fairly high numbers for a maxilla case. And of course, the question now for the speakers is what loading protocols would they choose for this specific situation? So I would like to start by addressing you, Tara, actually, what, because this case looks you know, a lot like the cases that you showed in your lectures that you, you said that, you know, for some reason, premolar cases seems to be many of your cases in your, in your clinical office. Uh, so what would you do in that case? Well, uh, definitely I would check the medical history because I think that the procedure itself was very straightforward. And sometimes I think we get caught up in the technical aspects of, of what we're doing and we sort of focus on the on the site, but the whole patient is really what's important here. And, you know, definitely the maxillary premolar is an area where implant placement is, is commonly done. And as you said, I do a lot of premolars. Um, but I think that if the patient is otherwise healthy with no medical concerns or risk factors, then I would seriously consider either at least a one stage placement, if not immediate loading. Now, certainly, if you had considered immediate loading, you would have already planned. Maybe you would have either had a temporary made digitally and pre-planned ahead of time, or maybe you would decide to make something chair side. But if the patient had really no risk factors, then I think with those ISQ values, then that would be a great, a great option. Great. What's your opinion, uh, Dr. Martin? So it, it's funny, Tara, you, you take the, the medical risk factor side, I'm gonna wear the restorative risk factor hat, you know? So there's no question, it's a healed site, there's great primary stability achieved, high uh, uh, OSTEL ISQ values. My question would be, how can I manage the occlusion? Um, so if this is a patient that has even bilateral posterior support, there's nothing that concerns me where I can deliver a restoration and protect it um, through the early healing phases, then I think I would move forward uh, without a doubt. This is a, this is a, a type four placement in a healed site. Um, with great stability, and there, there are big advantages to putting a restoration on at the time of placement, um, definitely uh, to help shape the transition zone and expedite the treatment, and if the patient has a high smile line, you know, we close the, the gap, and, and they're happy with that, so I, I, I support Tara in that if there's no medical risk factors and there's no prosthetic risk factors, um, I, I, we would be moving forward. But yeah, we have to be prepared to fabricate the provisional as well. So either something digitally or something chair side. Okay. And it's interesting that you brought up, and again, you know, sort of, you know, uh, prosthetic factors. And then I'm gonna give one more note about the patient. This patient actually lost this tooth. It was perfectly healthy, no fillings, nothing done on the tooth. And he, he is a really a real clencher. So if it, that's the information, what would you do? Stephen? Um, I think the alarm bells would be ringing immediately if this patient split a, uh, an unrestored tooth uh, due to occlusal factors. Um, I, I, I agree with Tara and Will. I think uh, the whole story has to begin when the decision is made to place an implant. And uh, you're thinking about the placement timing, you're thinking about the loading protocol and so on. And in this case, it's a type four placement. So the patient's obviously gone without the tooth for a while and uh, possibly has or hasn't had a, an interim provisional replacement. We don't know that. So when I look at loading protocols, one of the big things I also look at is what is the patient-centered benefit to doing this? Because there are additional things that you have to do uh, when you are when you are going for, a, a, for example, an immediate loading protocol. So if there is a strong patient-centered benefit as Will was saying, either for aesthetic reasons or to for, for 
for, for uh, um, reasons uh, such as that, then I think there could be a strong argument for that. But if there's no strong patient-centered benefit, then I'd keep it simple. I would do the, uh, place the implant, I would allow the area to heal, and I'd go for an early loading protocol uh, with the high stability that was achieved. Six weeks is probably sufficient, uh, and you can begin your restorative procedures. So I think it's, it's a case where you can't really make a definitive answer without really understanding the history behind the patient and, and uh, analyzing all the other variables that come into it. Yeah. And let's move on to you, uh, Kyle. What would be your sort of protocol? Yeah, well, you know, I kind of come from the aesthetic dentistry side and then worked my way into the surgical side. So thinking from, you know, taking into account what everybody said as far as medical histories and whatnot, um, it makes it so much easier for me, you know, this is selfishly, it makes it easier for me um, to get an aesthetic restoration, to get the right emergence profile, to get the right gingival margin when I can start that that shaping process at the implant placement. So, you know, with that high ISQ value, even if we do have a clencher, I'm gonna make a custom provisional and maybe have it just go a millimeter above the, uh, above the gingiva. Now we don't really get the benefit of having the aesthetics for the provisional phase. And, you know, like Steven was saying, the patient may not like that, right? If they don't have a tooth, but I would um, really like to put at least a, custom healing abutment on that tooth immediately. Now, also when you mentioned clenching and grinding, um, this puts off my airway bells. I'm such a airway fanatic recently. And, you know, we, we do have research now showing that um, clenching and grinding at night is really associated oftentimes with patients that have, um, you know, sleep apnea of some type or obstructive or a, um, some type of breathing problem. So I'd like to look into the history of that. 